Hey, good morning to everybody. Happy Monday. Happy New Year's. It's Daryl here. It's bright and freaking early, man. It's coming up right on 3 a.m. here in Connecticut on the East Coast. I was in a big hurry to get out here by 3 a.m. this morning. I got a good story, a good video that I want to talk about. But I also, I, I knew that by at 3 a.m. it was going to turn into New Year's on the West Coast. So, but then in my in my head, I knew that by the time I, by the time this downloads, it's going to be 4 or 5 a.m. So the New Year's will pass, you know, because I'm pre-recording this. I'm not pre-recording it, but I'm going to download it. It's going to take time to download. It's not a live stream. And, uh, you know, I knew that in my heart, but I still wanted to get out here by 3 a.m. just... In, in, in spirit, to, to to be with the West Coast, to, to say Happy New Year to the West Coast, because it's been it's been New Year's here for three hours already here on the East Coast. Uh, pretty soon, I'm going to be doing. I want to say this quick. I, I'm going to be doing live streams. The camera I got right now, I don't really trust. I want to be able to see all the comments that if I do a live stream. And uh, I got a I got my my phone's all crap. I need a new phone desperately. Uh, my sister got me a new a camera. Uh, I've got a new tablet. I've got all sorts of stuff here. A microphone, headphones. So, oh, and I downloaded a new YouTube app that, that's going to do transitions and text and uh, a few other things I forgot. But there's a new app. I'll, I'll put the link if anybody's interested down below. I can't remember what it's called. It's not called YouTube Studio. It's been around for a while. But YouTube... Uh, I can't remember what it's called. It's a new app on YouTube. Anyway, okay, so I got a, I got a video that I want to talk about this morning. It's kind of unfortunate that right off, you know, three hours into the new year that I want to talk about this kind of video, but it really got my attention. Uh, it's about Ian Ziering from 9021 of the show 90210. Now, Ian Ziering is 59 years old. He was born in March, uh, mid-March, I think, it was, uh, 1964. So he's almost exactly two years older than me. And this was yesterday. This was Sunday. So this is this is fresh news. And it's probably going to be making all the, the news channels, all the, the, the news this morning. Uh, he's on Hollywood Boulevard. I'm also, I found uh, old pictures of me on Hollywood Boulevard. I'm going to use them on the thumbnail. Uh, I spent, I spent less than a year uh, on around Hollywood Boulevard. And uh, I'll use some of the pictures in LA and San Diego. And I'll put some of those, like I talked in the surfing video yesterday. I'll put one of those pictures up on the, of me on Hollywood Boulevard. Hanging out, <laughs> up to no good. Uh, Alright, so he, Ian Ziering. He's going down Hollywood Boulevard Sunday. It's a great car. I'm not sure what it is. I'm not sure if it's an electric car or a Tesla or what it is, but it's a new great car. And apparently, now there's a bunch of, they, they call them bikers on TMZ, but these are no bikers on East Coast, by East Coast standards or by any standards. These are little mini bikes, like with wheels this big. And it's a it's a it's a bunch of little uh, of, of young people. It looks they they look like high school about high school age, uh, maybe about eight to ten at the most, on little mini bikes on Hollywood Boulevard. And apparently apparently it says on TMZ that they might have bumped into Ian Ziering's car. So he gets out and he starts pounding on one of these these mini bikers, and the rest of them automatic you know instantly turn around and come back. And just start wailing on Ian Ziering. Uh, the videos, it's a little, I gotta warn you, it's, you know, it's a little disturbing. To me, I, I, I've been in this situation. I, I'm gonna talk about that. I've been on both sides of this situation. I, I just, at 50, almost 58 years old, I remember things every day. And I remember being on the wrong side of this. And I'm gonna talk, I haven't talked, I've never talked about that. But anyway, so Ian starts to run across Hollywood Boulevard, which is like, I think it's like three lanes, four lanes on each side. It's a big road. You know, I'm surprised he didn't get hit. And uh, they chase him across the road. Of course, of course they chase him. And, you know, when you run, people are going to chase you, uh, you know, especially this, a pack like this. I'm going to talk about that more in a second. One of the people, one of the, the kids, as I think they are, he has a helmet and he looks like he's going to use it as a weapon. And I'm going to talk about that, too. And it looks like eventually Ian gets away. Okay. Uh, here's my... As soon as I watch this, this is the thing I got to ask myself. Is any car... If, if, if somebody... If, you, if I was in this situation and a bunch of, you know, mini bikes or whatever came by, a bunch of kids came by and say they took off... They hit my, my rearview mirror and bent it or something. What would I do? 
You know, I, I have an older car now. I'm, I'm getting a new car in about a month, a brand new Honda. So I, I don't, I don't know, you know, because I'm gonna be paying a lot of money every month for the new car. Uh, the best idea, honestly, I know the best thing to do is just stay in the car. Just report it and report it on your insurance. Have full coverage, report it on your insurance, and you'll you'll get them. You'll get more likely you'll get reimbursed for it. You'll get it fixed, and it's a done deal. Or you can report it to the police, and more than likely they they, they might catch these these people that that bumped into it. The worst thing to do, really, is get out of the car and just start you know grabbing somebody or start wailing on somebody. And I I I, I could say that in this video, but I've actually done that. Like one one time comes to mind. That this is this is when I first got clean and sober. We talk about how my emotions were very volatile when I first got clean and sober. I wasn't used to having emotions, and I was pulling out of Walmart, and a car cut right. He cut in front of me. Not only did he cut in front of me, but he didn't see me as I was driving down the road. And he, he, he I had to turn away and almost up onto the bank so he didn't hit me. He was looking at the other direction, and I had to turn and and go up over the bank to avoid him. And he pulled up at a stop sign and I pulled up next to him and I got out and I just started wailing. I, I'm still so embarrassed and uh, ashamed of doing this, but I started wailing on the window, telling him, get out of the car, get out of the car, man, get out of the car. And he just, he was scared and he just sat there and he looked straight ahead. And I got back, I eventually got back in my car. But you know, today I'm, I still remember this. I, I wish to God I never did that. I am ashamed of doing that. You know, over over what? And you know, and I realized that's just fear. A lot of times anger and hatred is just fear. Fear that I was gonna get hit, fear that I was gonna, you know, lose money, my car was gonna be damaged. That's it's really all it is. And I wish I had better control over myself at that time. Okay, looking at the situation with Ian Zeering, all right, getting out of the car, the mistake number one, really, it is. I, like I said, I don't know if I was in that situation. I don't know if I'd have an, enough control over my emotions now. I, I would like to think that I have more control over my emotions, that I'd get angry, but I would just go and I report it to the police, I report it to my insurance company, and I'd get money for it, and I'd get it fixed, and it'd be a done deal. You know, done and done. Uh, okay, so he gets out, and he starts, uh, look, I don't know if he's trying to apprehend this person, but he looks like he's wailing on this person, you know, and that's, that's you know, that's just not good. You know, he who lives by the sword dies by the sword, and that's that's the truth. So the other people come back, and this is, I've, I've learned this in these situations when, because uh, I've had to face multiple opponents in, in fistfights before. Like I've told you guys that before, like four or five people. And I had my nose broke, my face, my face bones broke under my eyes. And there's always going to be the leader, the alpha, and then there's going to be a beta. There's going to be the one that's going to come right at you, and then there's going to be one right behind him. Uh, every single time I've ever been in this situation, it's always been like that. The best thing to do is go right after, never run. If you run, these it's a predator instinct. If you run, all of them are going to chase you and jump on you. That's that's a given. That's a fact. And I was in the other situation. I'll, I'll tell you about that in a second. And stand your ground. And this is one of the best things this to do. I learned this. Even if you don't know who the person is, like if they're wearing a helmet in this video, say, I know you. Man, I know you. I know who you are. And say that, say that with confidence. And I guarantee you, I guarantee you, that person's gonna stop, you know, because they think they're anonymous with their head covered or whatever. And uh, if you start saying it with confidence, I know you, man, I, you know, they're gonna be like, oh my God, is this, is this my next door neighbor? Is this, you know, it's a good thing to do. It really is. Remember that. If, uh, if a bunch of people come at you like this, go, I know you, man, what are you doing? I know you. And say it with confidence. <laughs> but, if the if the alpha comes after you, you gotta face him head off and just go right at him as hard as you can. This is my advice because it's gonna happen one way or the other. If you run, they're all gonna chase you and jump on you. So you go after the alpha and go after the beta. Go after both the the, the two main. There's it's always gonna be like this. Every single time I've ever been in an altercation, it's always been like this. And the other ones will back off. What I call I call them the hyenas, the the opportunists, the followers. Uh, if you run, like you see in this video, there's this like chubby girl, and she's what I call a hyena. I don't mean to insult her, but she's an opportunist. You know, it's the, Ian runs and she starts chasing him. You know, but if if she if this if Ian stood his ground and faced the the one or two that were right in his face, guaranteed this or this other one wouldn't come after him. 
it's the it's the, it's the if once you get yourself in this situation it's really the only thing to do is to stand your ground and just go balls out and just go right after pick find get find your first main target and go hard after them saying i know you man i know you and go after them that's that is my i've done it it's my total advice here's something that i totally forgot until this morning i was in high school and we were throwing snowballs at cars. And my friends, one of my friends was the, the quarterback on a football team, the high school football team. He was in good shape and everything, very athletic, you know, a wrestler and everything like that. And then my other friend, also a wrestler. And then uh, my friend, the quarterback, his younger little sister, there was four of us and me. And we're throwing snowballs at night at cars. And my friend was kind of, he's kind of wealthy, uh, better, well off. His father was, uh, owns a car dealership. And there was another car dealership that the family lived down the road, who was kind of the, uh, uh, the competition of my friend's father. So we went to this guy's house, this big house, and we started throwing snowballs at the front of the house, at the windows, at the doors and everything. So we're pelting this house. And, you know, and we see the lights come on, we'd run. And then we'd come back, we'd throw more snowballs. Lights would come on, we'd run. All of a sudden, the, the owner, the father, comes. he snuck out of the house and he comes charging across the lawn at all four of us. And this, and, and again, it, it was, yeah, I, I wasn't the alpha. With me, I was dating the younger sister of my friend. So I kind of just fell back and protected her. The, the quarterback, my friend, he went right after, he was only like 17 years old and he went right after this guy. He was the alpha in this situation, and my other friend was the beta. And they started swinging on this guy, this father, this guy that was probably in his mid-40s. And he looked stunned, you know, but uh, he kept coming at us, even though, you know, we were, my friends were swinging at him. And he, my friends were stunned, you know, they, they hit him, and he still, you know, he was, he was a full-grown adult male. And he, and he still kept coming, even after my friend gave him a good shot. And that scared my friend and all of us, and we started running, and we hit under bushes, and, and that was it. But I've been on both sides of this. And once, my, my advice is don't get out of the car. A, car, a car, car damage is fixable. You know, getting bashed in the head, that's another thing. This, this one of these, these people are swinging a helmet, and a helmet was not made to be a weapon. When a person swings a helmet, it's going to hit, they're going to go wide and they're going to lose their balance. They're going to go way off balance. You know, that weight's going to carry through when they swing. You just stand back, let them swing once, let the helmet go by, and then come in right on them. Because a the helmet was not made to be a weapon. It's unwieldy. It's too heavy. You know, it's a, it's a very bad weapon. Unless you're an idiot and you're running in the other direction and you get hit in the back of the head when you can't see it coming. That's my advice. It's hard to do, really. Uh, honest, to be honest, so either either when it comes down to it, it's it's fight or flight. And some people just have it naturally in them, I believe, to, to fight. And some people have it in them to, for flight. It's just, I think it's a first inbred response, you know, going all the way back to whatever happened in your childhood. But my advice would be, don't get out of the car in the first place. A damaged car, a scratch on your car, a, a missing rear view mirror is not worth what's going to happen to you in this situation. Uh, or what could happen to you. And if you get out, go after the leader and go hard. And say, I know you, man. And it'll, it'll throw them off balance. It'll stun them. And it might give you the opportunity to get the upper hand. That's, that's my advice for this. Uh, the link will be down below. The video will be down below. You guys have a great New Year's. I got another video coming up today.